Hi everyone, it's Philip from Scoring Notes. Today we're taking a first look at Sibelius on iPad. This is the very first time we've seen Sibelius on iPad and we're excited to see what it can do. You might remember a while ago there was an iPad app called Scorch that opened and played back Sibelius files. This new app isn't that at all. It's a completely new app called Sibelius that you can download from the App Store. To a large extent, it replicates the desktop version of Sibelius, but with many iPad-specific features. While there's a lot you can do on Sibelius for iPad, it's not nearly as fully tricked out as the desktop version. This is version 1, and we expect more updates to the app over time. If you want to check it out for yourself, and you're an existing customer with an active support plan or subscription, you get the Sibelius iPad version at the same tier at no extra charge. That means that if you have a subscription to Sibelius Ultimate on your Mac or PC, that same subscription allows you full access to Sibelius on iPad. This is great for existing customers and instantly makes their support plan or subscription more valuable. Avid is clearly replicating a model like those we see in subscription apps from Adobe, Microsoft Office, Dropbox, and many other developers. The desktop version is the powerhouse application but you can access your files and work with them in useful ways on your iPad and round trip them infinitely without losing any information. All right, let's see what it looks like. When you first open Sibelius on your iPad, there are a few brief videos on navigating your score, making selections, note input using the Apple Pencil and keyboard and mouse support. We'll take a look at each of these areas a little bit more but first, let's see how we access documents. This area looks like you'd expect on many other iPad apps that use the iOS file management system. You can use cloud storage like iCloud Drive or Dropbox and open any Sibelius file you like. Opening a Sibelius score on iPad works as you'd expect. There's the standard pinch and zoom, and simply touching the score and dragging it moves it around. If you have a big score, you might be doing a lot of dragging, so I'd like to see inertial scrolling make it into a future version, but it's not in this first release. When you first download the app, you get the version called, appropriately, Sibelius First. It is completely free and anyone can download it without needing to register with Avid. Like its desktop counterpart, Sibelius First can open and play any file, but it's otherwise quite limited. If you're already a Sibelius customer, the first thing you'll want to do is unlock more features and sign in with your Avid account. The Sibelius app on iPad will automatically unlock the feature set to which you're entitled. I'm using the Sibelius Ultimate version. Speaking of unlocking, you'll want to take note of that lock icon. Locking the score puts it in review mode so you can drag your score around without worrying about changing anything. When the score is unlocked, you can still move the score around by dragging it, but you'll need to take more care that you don't accidentally change any music. Creating a score is more streamlined for now compared to the other options you have on the desktop app. You choose a preset manuscript paper and then you're off. But you can modify your score later. It's worth perusing the example scores, and you can certainly open up any of your own scores to see how they look. If you use the default fonts that come with Sibelius, everything should look exactly the same on the iPad as it does on the desktop. Even our Norfolk and Pori fonts are included, as are most of the text fonts that are bundled with the Scoring Express templates, like Steinberg's Academico and Petaluma Script. If you're looking for how to switch from the regular page view into panorama view, it's not in this initial release. It's something that I hope to see in the future because it's a great way of working with a score without being tied to a page format. Same thing with parts. Only the score is viewable right now. And that's a big one because you can easily imagine the benefit of sending a Sibelius file with formatted parts to anyone with the free Sibelius app from then to play from, but that's not in this first release. You can make a selection in Sibelius in a few ways, some of which will be instantly familiar. Tap a single bar, double tap for the entire staff for that system, and triple tap for the entire staff. Long press another staff to select it. This is basically like command clicking. Long pressing a bar makes a system selection, which is helpful to quickly delete a bar. Tapping with two fingers also makes a system selection. You can make a lasso selection by tapping and holding, and then dragging. 
Just like in Desktop Sibelius, almost anything can be selected and made into a multi-selection. Just tap and hold anything you would like to multi-select. Standard Apple three-finger gestures are supported. Swipe left for undo, right for redo. Pinch in for copy or twice for cut, and pinch out to paste. You can also do a three-finger tap to bring up a contextual menu. Let's take a look at entering notes. There's a keypad that bears a resemblance to the desktop version. You can minimize it or show it, and you can also orient it left or right on your screen. If you're just using your fingers, you need to first make a selection to tell Sibelius where you want the notes to go. Tap and hold a note on the keypad to bring up the ghost note. By default, it will be the same pitch as the previous note on the staff. On the keypad, drag your finger up or down to raise or lower the pitch by step and left or right to adjust it chromatically. I found this worked surprisingly well and was actually fun if a little tedious to use. Rests are entered by holding the rest on the keypad and dragging your finger left or right to adjust the duration. This was also pretty easy to grasp. You'll make some mistakes. Anticipating this, Sibelius on iPad gives us easy access to a delete key and an undo key directly in the keypad. In place of the familiar plus or minus buttons, you'll see two new ones a pitch correction tool, and a chord input tool to help after you input a note. Dragging the pitch correction tool up or down will adjust the note in those directions, while dragging it left or right will add accidentals. The chord input tool adds an interval of a third if you simply tap it, but if you hold and drag it first, you can use it in the same way you'd input a single note. I do miss the repeat key here, the equivalent of R on the keyboard. Hopefully a future version will add the equivalent of pressing R to quickly repeat something you've just entered. The rest of the keypad layouts look and function similarly to the desktop app. You have more notes, beams and tremolos, articulations, jazz articulations, including bar repeats, and accidentals, just like in desktop Sibelius. Using the Apple Pencil is another matter when it comes to note input. As appealing as it is to use, I couldn't quite get the hang of some of the more advanced features Sibelius introduces here. You need to hard press with the Apple Pencil to activate note entry. Once that happens, you tilt the pencil up or down to raise or lower the note chromatically and tilt it left or right to adjust its duration. It's a nice idea to try to cram all of this into the pencil and I really tried to get comfortable with it, but I found it too hard to reliably get the results I wanted. Where the pencil is helpful is when you want to make precise selections, essentially using it as a sharper version of your finger. That's very useful for selecting handles and other smaller items. You can also get reasonably quick tapping notes into the score. If you like this method of working in Sibelius already, it will feel the most natural. Moving on, you've noticed by now that there's no ribbon on Sibelius for iPad. Instead, we have the plus icon, which is actually called the Create menu. It's not identical to the old Create menu on Sibelius desktop, but there are many similarities. You do have your common notations like clefs, key and time signatures and bar lines, line styles and symbols, text styles, and instruments. Most of this works just as it does in Sibelius for desktop. 
One difference is that a change made to a passage selection on a single bar only affects a change on the start of that passage for things like clef and signature changes to make it easier to quickly tap and make a change. This is a good time to mention the word menus. You'll see the MF icon when you're entering text. This is how you access the contextual menu for dynamics and other text. You can also type in your own text. The Create menu is also where you both add an instrument change to an existing staff and add a new instrument to the score. Even in the Sibelius Ultimate tier of the iPad version, you don't get every last instrument that you would on the desktop version, but you do get the most common ones. For some of the larger categories here and elsewhere, you'll want to make use of the search box. Otherwise, you'll be doing a lot of scrolling. You might be wondering, once you add an instrument to a staff, how do you actually change its position in the score without using the old instruments dialog to which we were accustomed in the desktop version? This is where the command search comes in. Command search was introduced in the Sibelius 2021.2 desktop update, and it plays an important role in the iPad version. For instance, if you want to move that instrument we've just added up or down, you need to move the move instruments up or move instruments down command. If you're a longtime Sibelius user, you might have a decent grasp of what these commands are called and what they do, but if not, it's much more difficult to find your way around. Another example is dragging a staff to adjust its vertical position. In desktop Sibelius, you can simply click and drag it. In Sibelius for iPad, you can do that too, but you'll need to select the command switch auto optimize on or off. This is done to make it easier to tap and move the score around without accidentally moving a staff, and it's a good idea, but there's no indication of the score's state one way or the other. It's the same for the state of transposing score and several other routine Sibelius features. That being said, if you want to get closer to the Sibelius desktop experience on the iPad, you can connect an external keyboard and mouse. This will feel much more familiar, but there is one caveat for numeric keypad users. Sibelius on the iPad does not support the numeric keypad. Instead, you'll need to use the number row. Generally, Sibelius on iPad uses the same shortcuts designed for notebook or laptops. Rounding out the experience on iPad are some basic functions. Playback is essentially a start and stop operation. Like on the desktop, you can solo a staff or several staves by making a passage selection. There's no transport window or no other advanced playback features on this first version of Sibelius for iPad. You can make some basic changes to your document setup, page orientation, margins, and staff sizes, and you can print to your network printers. Exporting the PDF is possible via the Print Preview by performing a zoom out gesture on the score. From there, you can share or save it just about anywhere. A simple PDF button would be very helpful here, but the functionality is there. That's our first look at the first version of Sibelius on iPad, which, despite some omissions in version 1 like panorama view and the ability to work with parts, is overall a really cool and fun experience and a significant milestone in the evolution of music notation software. It especially brings a lot of additional value to existing Sibelius users, and anyone can download the app for free and use its basic features. 
Thanks for watching, and be sure to check out more coverage on scoringnotes.com and on the Scoring Notes podcast.